Hello, I'm Craig Fuller, Principal Tuba Player of the Omaha Symphony, and I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about practicing. That's an important issue, talking about how to become a better musician. You need to practice, and some every day. My teacher, Harvey Phillips, always said to us, time wins over talent in every case. So there are a lot of things that I could talk about in practice, but the first thing I want to talk about is how to organize your practice. When I start practicing, I try to think what I'm, I set some goals for myself. What am I trying to accomplish? And I like to play some things that are recognizable to me, some things that I know well, and I also want to do some practice on things that I don't do well things that I need to improve on. But before I start any practice session, I always have to warm up. And I start my warm up from the middle of register of the instrument, working in the extremes. I warm up all aspects of my practice, of my playing, uh, including breathing, buzzing, tonguing, slurring, all the basics. So I'll start out in my practice session by just doing some easy breathing exercises, breathing in and out. And then a little quicker. A quicker inhalation and a long exhalation. And then I'll start doing a little bit of buzzing just on the mouthpiece by itself. Some slurs, and what I call a siren. So up and down. And I do that for a few minutes. And then I start playing some pentatonic scales, some easy scales, maybe not even a whole octave. Like I said, five notes. Then I'll expand my range with scales and do full octave, an octave and a half scales. Um, then I'll work on some slurs as part of a warm up. Some slow slurs, for example. So these are lip slurs on a brass instrument. I'm not changing the valves at all, I'm just going and playing the open harmonics of the instrument. And I'll vary these. I'll start sometimes from higher notes and go down to lower notes, all on the open harmonic series, the notes that you can play without any fingerings. And then I'll practice some scales or arpeggios using some tonguing patterns, some rhythmic patterns. <laughs> that by playing different rhythms and certainly in different keys. I like to play all of the major scales every time I sit down to play the instrument. So I'll start usually on a low note and work my way up by half steps. That's one way of doing it. Another way of practicing all your scales is going in the circle of keys. So starting on B flat, then going to E flat and A flat and going around that way. Um, then as part of my practice routine I like to play some arpeggios throughout the range of the instrument. So So expanded on that will be my warm-up exercises for the day or for the practice session. And my warm-up can last anywhere from 5 minutes to 20 minutes, depending on the day and the circumstances. And then organizing your other parts of your practice, I like to do things first 
that involve melodic playing, playing melodies that I know. I have some books that I play out of that have melodies that um, are important to me, melodies from operas, melodies from all, all different things. So um, playing melodically is important. It was important to me when I started out in fifth or sixth grade and my band director kindly gave me some books of Herb Albert and the Tijuana Brass that, I mean, it's melodies that I really liked and it led me to practice. So part of practicing is doing things you like to do. It'll make you do some more practice every day. And the other side of that is practicing things that you don't do well and maybe don't like to do as much is also very important. So I'll start my practice with playing melodies, Bach melodies, or melodies from operas. And then I'll get into playing things that I need to work on for the week. I mean, the symphony, sometimes we get a stack of music every week, pops concerts and symphony concerts, and I will need to go through that music and practice the difficult sections. Practicing really involves taking some of the difficulty out of the music so you can achieve success. So usually that involves playing things more slowly so that you can get the coordination. I like to say to my students that there is no single item of playing the tuba that is that difficult. It's the coordination of all the things. Breathing, buzzing, blowing, fingering, all those things need to be coordinated. So practicing very slow on especially the technical challenges is really the way to go. I also like to take things down an octave if they're high, take things up an octave if they're low. Again, taking the difficulty out and finding success. Really, if you practice the same thing wrong every time, you're practicing in the air rather than practicing to get success. So I'll spend a lot of my time in practice working on things that I really need to improve on. And that is part of diligent practice. And then at the end of my practice, I will go back to either playing some of the melodies that I enjoy playing or playing the pieces that I'm going to have to perform later in the week. I'll play them straight through without stopping. In a sense, a kind of rehearsal. So, or even a kind of performance. There are really four kinds of playing that you do in the tuba and you shouldn't intermix them. There's warm-up, practice, rehearsal, and performance. And certainly you don't want to be warming up during a performance or practicing during a performance, but you don't want to be performing during your practice time. You need to be really practicing on the things you need to work out. I like to do some um, practice at the end of my practice session that's without a metronome, without a recording, and just putting my mind at, at being in the place where I'm going to perform. Put myself at the Holland Center and play the excerpt that I'm going to have to play that next week in front of the public. Um, I do that so that nothing is a surprise to me when I go to work. Um, all right, going back to practice, because it is the most time I spend playing the tuba. More than performing, more than rehearsing, it's practicing. And I use tools to help me do a better job at practicing. My first tool that I always have is a metronome. I like a standalone metronome that's not on my phone and I like one with a dial that you move back and forth really quickly so that you can change tempos. It's just easier for me. But I also use the metronome that's on my phone and I hopefully all young people have a metronome app available for their use. Um, 
A metronome is the essential tool of musicianship, other than an instrument, a mouthpiece. Uh, you learn to play together with other people by playing accurately in rhythm, in time. Um, I also have a tuner on my phone and I have a tuner in my practice room so I can check notes. It doesn't absolutely make you play in tune. You need to learn to match pitch with other people. And a tuner will help you learn the eccentricities of your instrument. And I play three different instruments in the Omaha Symphony and I have to remind myself which notes are a little bit out of tune, need a little adjustment, um, and I use a tuner for that. But I also use a, t a program called TuneUp, and that helps me match pitch with a synthesized track. A lot of people use drones, and I do that a little bit as well, but I really enjoy the program um, called TuneUp by Stephen Colley, and I match pitch with, um, it's a chorale, a Bach chorale that's on that. And also he has exercises that help you learn how to match pitch with other tones that you hear. I do it with headphones so I can turn it up and um, not damaging me so, but I turn it up and I can listen to, um, to pitches that are accurately adjusted and in tune and match them. So those are a couple tricks that I have for practicing, but remember, it's the time. It's the time every day that you invest in your instrument that will pay dividends.